Hello again, friendly viewers. We are here again at Callie's Natural Foods in Salt Lake City, Utah, USA, with Chef Ian Brandt. If you had joined us yesterday, we had the pleasure of cooking with Ian, who is the wonderful owner and chef of two of Utah's finest award-winning vegetarian restaurants, Sage's Cafe and Vertical Diner. Ian invites us back into his kitchen to learn some tips and secrets of how to make one of his most famous dishes. We say that when the yellow onions are about 75% translucent, that it's about ready to go, and I'd say that's about right. If you look at this, that's, you know, it's about 75% translucent, so the garlic can go in. Out of anything preparing European-style food or any uh, Asian foods that have a lot of garlic, that is probably the most crux position of any sauce, is cooking uh, everything to the point where you just don't, do not burn the garlic. It's okay if the garlic has a roasted type flavor, a golden brown color, but you just don't want it to ever turn black and uh, actually burn. And so now that we're right there, we can uh, deglaze with our water and our wheat-free tamari. And this is actually gonna prepare enough that you'll be able to have this dish in a couple different ways. This dish, this dish could make a great pizza sauce. This dish could make a great filling for uh, lasagna. It's a great foundational sauce that can be used in other applications. I've prepared this over polenta. I've prepared this with mashed potatoes. It can be prepared with gnocchi. Once you have the base sauce, you can apply it to many different dishes. And that's something very important that I want everyone to walk away from with this uh, cooking show is that it's important to prepare not just enough for one family meal, but maybe a little extra so that you're not wasting your time in the kitchen. You can have a little bit left over for the next day or the following day. And in this process, this slow cooking process, all the flavors will come together, kind of like a soup stock or a soup does. So what we're doing is, as you can see right here, in terms of the consistency of this broth, what we want to do is reduce that to half the volume in the course of about 15 minutes. For our tofu sour cream, once again, it'll be blended with our stroganoff mushroom base. We take the morning new tofu, this is great stuff. In a vegetarian kitchen, this is pretty much um, critical to making really amazing textured sauces and desserts and anything you can imagine. And so we'll take the morning new tofu, and put it in the blender. This is just a standard home blender. You, know, you don't need fancy equipment to prepare fancy food. So we're gonna throw the salt in. We're just gonna throw all the ingredients that go into making the tofu sour cream. We have uh, just simple distilled vinegar. The olive oil, you'll taste it in this tofu sour cream. But if we're blending this into uh, another sauce that already has olive oil in it, it really doesn't matter. So once again, I want to give you the flexibility of using different ingredients in your recipes. And we have the evaporated cane juice. This is lemon juice that's organic in the bottle. If you're pressing your own juice, pressed juice is twice as powerful to the palate as bottled fresh pressed juice. We'll blend this up and then you'll, uh, you'll be able to use this in other recipes. Uh, you could use this to make nachos, you could use this um, to make uh, as a garnish for enchiladas. And to make your tofu sour cream nice and thick, you basically you don't want to add any water, but you do have to stir a little bit. So we're gonna stir this up, break the tofu up a little bit, and then it'll come back together down in the bottom of the blender. You want to get in there and scrape the edges down, regardless of what kind of blender you have, because uh, with this kind of sauce, it, what's going to impress your guests or your family the most is when that silken tofu has absolutely zero chunks in it. And we'll call that good. So that's what you're left with is a velvet smooth texture right there. So. And at this point in time, our sauce is ready for the fresh herbs. Once again, this is the winter savory and the sage. And we'll throw that in and give it a few stirs. And as you can see, our, our sauce is thickening up a little bit from the vegetables. So that's kind of what you're looking for is about that consistency. And you can just then cool this in your fridge. And this can be used uh, for other recipes, other sauce bases. It's a really nice base ingredient to even a pasta sauce with tomatoes. Anything's possible once you complete the first stage like this in preparation. 
And so what we'll do is we're going to basically go to step two. And we're going to cook this two different ways, one gluten-free. And so we'll have that as our gluten-free spoon. I, I try to separate every utensil for gluten-free. You just don't know how sensitive your guests are. Basically, what we'll do is it's approximately 50-50, 50% of this base with 50% of the tofu sour cream. And so we'll just eyeball and portion that out. We're going to start boiling the pasta. Pasta this thick takes yeah, about three to four minutes. You want this to enter into the boiling water and it just shocks it and it firms it up right away. If you use water that's not at a boil, it will kind of melt the flour away and it'll get gummy. Dry pasta, fresh pasta, you want it to be going into the hottest water you can get. So we'll start with that. And when that gets to the point where it's floating is usually about when it's done. I like to look at color. You could set a timer for three minutes. What we'll do is we'll have the rice go into this pan. This is just a simple long grain brown rice. And we'll portion out uh, a spoonful of the sour cream. Okay. And then we'll portion out you know, approximately a spoonful of our base right here. You have to be careful with the tofu sour cream. If it's too hot, it'll break, and that nice creaminess will be lost. And so we'll bring that down in temperature, and we'll let it just warm up. And then in this other pan, we'll be doing the same thing, but for the pasta dish. You know, approximately a spoon of each. So, so we have about that much, and we'll match that with the sour cream. And this dish actually was one of the first dishes that became really popular at Sage's Cafe. And that's why I wanted to prepare it for you after going to the restaurant today and discussing uh, the history of the restaurant. This is uh, one of the most popular dishes at the restaurant. We tried to take it off the menu one year for summer because we thought it was more of a winter dish. And our guests revolted and they basically forced me to put it back on the menu. So that's kind of a little history with the mushroom stroganoff. And I think we're ready to get our pasta. See how it's falling apart right there? That's just where you want it to be. So take one out and bring it over here. And we could cut it. And then eat it. It's ready to go. All these noodles put into the sauce. You can dr drop a little bit of water in, that's okay. And then what you're left with is just basically bringing the sauce into the noodles to create a nice consistency. A little bit of the flour from the noodles actually forms a nice consistency for the sauce. It'll thicken the sauce to another level and then we'll be able to mold it nicely on the plate, forming a nice pile in the center of the plate. So what we're doing now is we're going through the final plating and, and this is the best part I think because that's where it all comes together and then you can enjoy your food. Um, what we have here is our sauce with the noodles, this is our mushroom stroganoff and our pepperadelli wide noodle, fresh made locally in Utah here by some friends of mine. And we have these really nice plates and we can kind of position the pasta right about here. What we want to do is we want to get the noodles out first and then try to get those mushrooms, or at least a few of those mushrooms on top, because that's kind of, that's kind of the king of the plate right there, is those portobello mushrooms. And so we'll put those on top. We can kind of position them so they look really attractive. And then we have is a little bit of dill, and dill is used in a lot of northern European food, which is kind of where this originates. It's kind of like a, a German type um, Italian fusion. And we can kind of throw a little, little parsley leaf here. You know, let's see. And we could also throw in some fresh ground pepper. Just a little bit of that around the outside. Gives it another flavor profile by having the extra black pepper around the outside. And then what we have here is we have our risotto style long grain brown rice. 
mushroom stroganoff. And what I have here is, this is kind of an exciting way to plate this up. And we could plate it up straight, but I think that with food, it always looks best when you kind of change the perspective a little bit. So what we do here is really carefully not to spill on the outside, put it in this sushi form. We fill this mold up with the stroganoff and the rice. We want to kind of put some of those mushrooms on top because once again, that's our king. So what we do here is, this is now formed. And what we'll do here is put a few of these mushrooms on top. We'll take the rice off the mushrooms. And it's, this is really, this is going to be cool. And, and then put maybe a couple of these on top. And so there we are with our risotto style uh, gluten free portobello mushroom stroganoff. And then we'll finish that off with a little bit of fresh herbs. We can add some of this Italian flat leaf parsley around the edge. We can throw a little sprig of this dill on top just for excitement and pleasure. The noodle dish looks pretty good, but this is really unique. And uh, this is kind of the stuff you do to impress your friends and, uh, and then they'll love you forever. And that's, that's really good. So what we have here is our gluten-free mushroom brown rice stroganoff and our pepper deli pasta portobello stroganoff, both prepared completely vegan uh, using sustainable ingredients and as healthy as possible. My name is Chef Ian Brandt and thank you for watching Vegetarianism, The Noble Way of Living. We send many thanks to Chef Ian Brandt for introducing the creative and delicious possibilities of plant-based foods. Coming up next on Supreme Master Television is Between Master and Disciples. May well-being and happiness accompany you always. Visit Ian Brandt's multi-award winning gourmet vegetarian establishments in Salt Lake City, Utah, USA, Sage's Cafe Vegetarian Organic at sagescafe.com, Vertical Diner Extreme Dining at verticaldiner.com, and Callie's Natural Foods at calliesnaturalfoods.com. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash veg.